Friday. Did anybody tell you? It is Friday. And you know, time flies when you're having fun. So get on in here. Let's see what we can. Let's see if there's a song we can play. I think we're going to set the tone right now with slow and steady because things don't happen just like that. Get on in here. But I'm still on the ground, on the ground. I'll soon be flattery if I can find my wings, find my wings. Impatiently, I want. But I hear a gentle voice inside me say that slow and steady steps lead my pace. <laughs> slow and steady steps will win this race. It will take some time. But the victory will be mine. Slow and steady, I'm gonna learn to fly. I'm starting to believe I only race with me. Only me. I can't give to someone else this journey for myself. It's for myself. Since my best is all I have, it is enough. I can see a ray of hope. I've got to try. That slow and steady steps will be my face. Slow and steady steps will win this race. It will take some time, but the victory will be mine. Slow and steady. the weekend but today today we're going to talk about how to get started with fly lady what are some of the most important things i just want you to know 
that this is easy. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And I did it. I got my home organized. Now, that doesn't mean I have to stay. I, I'm never going to have to touch it again. Never going to have to declutter again. But I stay on top of things. I have a system. And this system works. But you got to utilize the system. It's not going to happen immediately. You know, a lot of times we want things to happen real fast. And that's when we crash and burn. That's when we crash and burn. And I don't want you to ever crash and burn again. We're starting to go through this book. We did day one yesterday. And day one is go shine your sink. It's that simple. That's where I started. And and I, I want to tell you my story of where I started. I woke up on New Year's Day like every other red-blooded American female and I made a New Year's resolution. This was in 1999. Robert and I had been married two years and I wanted to get organized. Yeah, how do you do that? I wanted, I made that New Year's resolutions to get organized. And I pulled out my Pam and Peggy card file system, which was the only thing that ever worked in the past for me. And I started trying to figure out why I couldn't stick with it. You know, why could I not stay with something that I knew worked? And so I pulled out this stack of cards. I mean, it was, they were three by five cards and they were in yellow and blue and green and pink and they're in all these colors. And I started sorting through them and I sorted a pile of daily cards which mine were green i sorted i uh, i sorted a pile of blue cards which were monthly pop cards i sorted a pile of pink cards and i saw this stack of over 50 cards and i'm thinking this is the daily things 50 things to do and i'm thinking Oh, I, I can't do that. You know, I'm already beating myself up before I ever get started. So I said, okay, I, a light bulb moment went off in my head. I don't have a light bulb over here. I usually had a backup light bulb here, but I don't, I don't see one. Light bulb went off in my head and I said, I know, I'll make a list. <laughs> How many of you said that today? I'll make a list. Guess what? I made a list. It was the front and back of one sheet of notebook paper. You know, there's 26 lines on a piece of notebook paper. I took up every one of them, flipped it over and did the backside. 50 items to, to do. And I looked at that list and I said, I can't do that. You know, my granny always said, can't never could do anything. And she said, can't. Can't never could do anything. But guess what? Looking at that big list, I realized what my problem was. And my problem was I had never established a habit. One habit. I knew I couldn't establish three habits, five habits, ten habits. That's what I've done my whole life is, is just to jump in with both feet and go 90 miles an hour and until I stopped and I couldn't do any more. And then I'd throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, I was determined this time because I realized I had never established a habit. So I decided right there and then to pick one habit in my stack of cards in my list of things i pick one habit and this was on january 1st and that habit was keeping my sink clean and shiny now it took me a while to get it clean <laughs> It really did. It took me about two hours. I filled my 25-year-old. Um, Robert built the house in 1975. 
and the sink had been there and we have um mineral water it leaves spots on things and crustiness everywhere it's not hard water because we just had it tested this week so the water's not hard but it has a mineral content to it and we know that the mineral content is magnesium because we got that checked out and magnesium is a good thing but it's not when it sticks on your sink so i scrubbed i took um uh, the point of a little steak knife and went around the edge of the rim of the sink. I, I, I filled the sink up with hot water and bleach and let it set for just sit in for a little while, about an hour. The directions, Shiny Sink 101, are on our website about getting started. I rinsed that out really well, if still needed polishing. So I got some steel wool, SOS pads, and I polished it really well. Rinsed it out again, and, and then I wiped it and shined it with um, some Windex. You got to rinse between every step because you don't want to mix chemicals, y'all. So pay attention. And when I finished... Our 25-year-old sink looked like a brand new penny, except it was stainless steel, not copper, stainless steel. And it made me smile. It made me smile. Now, here's the best part. I practiced keeping it clean and shiny the whole rest of the month, from January 1st to January 31st. That's why... We have 31 baby steps, 31 baby steps to sort of get you into the flying scheme of things. Well, because that sink was clean and shiny, you wouldn't, I didn't want to put a dirty dish in that sink. So guess what I had to do? I had to make sure the dishwasher was always ready to accept dirty dishes. The, well, as soon as the dishwasher finished up, I I put the dishes away. And, you know, I was thankful we had a dishwasher. You know, when we first got married, Robert said to me, I for, where was I? I think I was outside doing some gardening or something. And he came out there and he said to me, honey, if you'll just leave one side of the sink open, so that I can get a, a drink of water and make coffee. I'll give you a cup of coffee every day. And guess what I got this morning? A cup of coffee sitting by my chair. He, he does it. He's, his commitment to me, if I made a commitment to him to keep one side of the sink empty. He didn't ask it to be clean. He just said empty. So that's why I picked shining my sink keeping my sink clean and shiny, having a commitment to establishing and doing, not just thinking about it, actually doing it every day before when I would get through with my dinner dishes and cleaning up after cooking, I would wipe the sink dry. And, you know, we got a sale on these big old, these wonderful purple rags and, and they're $10. So you... Get stocked up right now. Christmas is just around the corner. I know it. Time flies, y'all. I work on a two week, two weeks at a time. And I, I held my little pad up yesterday because I highlight everything after I finish it. Held it up to Robert and I said, this, this two weeks just flies by. He said, welcome to my world. So... Practicing a habit for a whole month helps to instill it into you. It becomes part of you. And so mine for that first month was, I didn't worry about anything else. I kept my sink clean and shiny. I'd get up in the morning. Robert would have a cup of coffee ready for me. I mean, he would have it ready for me to turn on. We were made, At that time, we weren't making a pot of coffee. And we only make two cups in a pot, but we had espresso, a little espresso machine. 
and <clears throat> which we still have, but now that he's retired and home every day, he's, it's just easier to make one little pot. And, you know, having that sink clean and giving him the ability to make the coffee, this was when he was going to work every day. And he worked until he was, he retired at 60. Praise the Lord. I'm 66 and I haven't retired yet. I will never forget. This is a duck. His mother asked him one day at Thanksgiving, one one Thanksgiving, you know, is this fly lady thing going to bankrupt you? And he said, Mom, I'm a kept man. <laughs> she worried that fly lady was just going to spend it. Fly lady pays her own way. <laughs> and then some. And so um, establishing that habit just, it changed my whole attitude about things. Because psychologists tell us it takes 21 days to establish a habit. They don't know us. They do not know us. Because what we do is we'll go five days and do really good. Then the weekend to hit and nothing's done. Or the Monday hits and nothing's done. We'll, we'll go... We just have this attitude. If we miss a day, we can't do it. We can't do it. So what I learned by establishing one habit over a whole month, 30, 28, uh, 31 days, that if I messed up, I could jump back in. I gave myself. 10 days of grace. You know, the good Lord gives us grace all the time. All the time we get grace. And so that 10 days of grace gave me the ability. Now, I had a rule. This is a good rule. I couldn't skip more than one day. At I couldn't do two days. I had to do one day and jump back in where we are. One day. But then I jumped back in and it was as if I had never missed a day. Imagine that. You never miss a day because you just jump back in like it's still that day. You don't think about it. You don't beat yourself up. On that New Year's Day, I made two New Year's resolutions. Now, I really don't make New Year's resolutions anymore. I, I, I pick a word. My word this year is to surrender to the Lord's will for my life. And I, I believe I've done that. I think he has a lot more things in, in store for me. So I'm still listening. My, the scales are off my eyes. I, my ears are open. My heart is ready for whatever God sends my way. And it is a, a, a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to be ready to go where God sends you, just to be ready. So folks, practicing that habit of shining your sink every day, not, not doing the full blown, because once you get it clean, all you got to do is, is just wipe it dry. That's, that's what my granny did. That was the last thing she did in her kitchen every night. She would take her dishcloth that she had dried dishes with, and she would wipe her sink dry and then go lay it across her washing machine ready for the next time she did laundry. So we can do this, y'all. If I could do it, anybody can. And I realized that establishing a habit is all about consistency. Doing it day after day after day after day. It's not boredom. It's not a straitjacket. You're building a framework for your life to, to grow on. And, and really, it's grow. We got a testimonial one time. This, this lady said she was in college and she, was, she took an art class and, and she wanted to learn how to sculpt. I can't imagine being a sculptor. 
you know, we see statues. I, I looked up a statue that was in front of um, Buckingham Palace this week. Somebody had to carve that. And then it got put in a mold and then they filled it full of bronze. And uh, maybe it's gold gilded. I don't know. But it was a, a beautiful monument to Queen um, Queen Victoria, I believe. But I looked it up. You know, statues are around everywhere. But I don't know how to make one. But the first day of class, the professor in this art class handed out a block of wood, a, a spool of wire, and um, a rod, a rod. And people would try to put these things together and, and try to figure out. And, and then they once they got this foundation made, they would start layering the clay on. Layering the clay. You know, they don't start with a big hunk of clay. They have to build a foundation. And if you didn't put that foundation together properly, once you got all that heavy clay on there, sometimes... The, the statue that they were building just collapsed on its own weight. So you learned real quick, quick that the rod has to go into the base and that the wire gets wrapped around the, the rod to help hold things together. You don't want your life to go just collapse under its own weight. We've got to build a foundation. And that foundation are these simple habits that we practice every month. Now, January is keeping your sink clean and shiny. Or when you first join, it's keeping your sink clean and shiny. February is decluttering because decluttering our homes is one of the most important things we can do. I mean, it is, if we don't get rid of the clutter out of our homes, we had a question yesterday from a lady who had a two bedroom home. She had a disabled daughter, a teenager, and her disabled daughter's three kids in her home with two bedrooms. You have got to get rid of the clutter. You have got to get rid of it or you don't have room. You don't have room to live. So, we have to get the clutter out of our way so that we can function, function in our lives, function. That clutter is standing in our way of what we need to be doing. It's taking up valuable spaces in our home for storage of a pantry. I mean, if you were to go open up your linen closet right now, things would fall out of it. I mean, lots of things would fall out of because you got too much stuff in there. You got too many cleaning products. You got too many hair pro products. You got too many towels, too many sheets, too many blankets. When you could take that pantry and transform it, you can take that closet and transform it into a pantry for extra food. So y'all, practice these habits each month. Make them become part of you. February's decluttering. I'm going to go over the list. January, keep your sink clean and shiny. February, declutter. 15 minutes every day. Five minutes in the morning, five in the afternoon, five in the evening. This room used to be piled to the ceiling, but I transformed this room into an extra bedroom in the beginning but now it's my studio. It's my studio. It makes me happy. I've got things on the wall that make me happy. If they don't make me happy, they come down. 
So folks, March is habit. That's getting dressed to lace up shoes every day, every single day. And if you're sick, like Julie hasn't been feeling well, if she's well enough to get out of bed, she needs to be dressed to lace up shoes. You need to have your clothes on, not in your bathrobe, not in your jammies, not in sweats. You need to be dressed to lace up shoes. If you can get your butt out of bed, you can get dressed. Do you hear me? You're going to feel better. And fix your hair and fix your face so that when you go into the bathroom, you don't scare yourself. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. If you can get out of bed, you can get dressed. Now, if you can't get out of bed, that's a different story. But if you can put your feet on the floor, you can be dressed. Because running around in your gown tail, as my granny would say, doesn't make you feel good. It makes you feel frumpy. So get your clothes on. April's habit is making your bed. If you make your bed, you're not likely to jump back into it. May's habit is moving. Get your butt outside in a sunbeam and walk a little bit. Even if it's just to your front door and out on your porch and back. Get moving. Move for 15 minutes a day. If you can't get far from the house, walk around the house. Up and down your driveway. Walk around inside your house. There are no excuses. There are no excuses. June is drinking your water. Most of us have fatigue because we're dehydrated. Do you hear me? We're, we have fatigue because we do not drink our, we don't drink enough water during the day. We may drink one small glass if we have to take some morning medications, but we don't touch it anymore. You've got to set up reminders to make sure you get some fluids because when if, if you stay a little bit constipated, it's because you're not drinking enough water, y'all. You're not drinking enough water. So drink your water. You know, I look at videos on YouTube all the time and, and some plumbing videos come up. And septic tanks are just one big mass of things. And they have to get that stuff all liquefied before they can ever pump it out. I mean, they have to put the blender to it and get it all chopped up so they can get it out. We got to get some fiber in us and some water to get that stuff flushed out of our bodies. That is, we talk about that in, in our book, Body Clutter. That's the ultimate procrastination when we don't drink enough water. You have to have uh, enough water in your body to help things flow through. July's habit is swish and swipe. That keeps your bathroom clean all the time, every day. That swish and swipe. Swish and swipe. It's, it's, you never have to worry about having a messy bathroom. Do you hear me? I think I need a, uh, I need a, a, a t-shirt that says, do you hear me? Let's see, uh, August habit is doing a load of laundry every day. Uh, you know, I'm watching Miss Lori on Whippoorwill Hollow, and she does small loads of laundry every day. Small loads of laundry. And she mainly uses a lot of dish towels because <laughs> she's cooking all the time. You got to have clean dish towels in your kitchen. That's just not, no if ands, or buts about it. That's August habit. September. We're in September. September's habit is your before bed routine. Now, that's three parts to your before bed routine. You think about tomorrow. You uh, pick up and put away the things that are out in your house. That means take about tomorrow. You check your calendar. What do you got to do? Do you have a doctor's appointment at 8 o'clock in the morning? And you forgot about it, 
then write write it on your bathroom mirror with a dry erase marker to remind you when you first get up if you need help. This is a tip from a fly baby. So do it. Think about tomorrow. You know, is it going to be raining? What are you going to need to take to that doctor's appointment? Do you need to be fasting from midnight on? Or do the kids have um, soccer practice today and they need their little soccer shoes and a change of clothes and water bottles and different things? Set those things up on your launch pad so that you have a place. You know, even if I'm in a hotel room, I've got a launch pad where I'm ready to walk out the door to speak in engagement or whatever I've got to do. And then you got to get yourself ready to go to bed at a decent hour. I know this is the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> Sometimes my decent hour is one o'clock, one thirty. Last night it was one thirty, But I was praying and worshiping and I felt I felt the need to take communion last night. And, and so I, I did those things. I, I did the things to get me ready to go to bed. And yeah, I was a little late, but you know, I slept until 9.15 this morning and I'm, I'm good to go. And I don't take naps in the afternoon. Rarely do I take a nap. But here we are. We're in September. We're practicing our before bed routine because in, the most important part of your before bed routine is picking out your clothes for tomorrow. So you need to know what you're doing. You know, have you got to get your blood pressure taken or whatever? You, you got to have the right clothes on. And having them picked out, placed in a, a, a on a hanger, in a in front of your eyes, so you don't have to think. You know, none of us do too well thinking in the morning. But when you're on autopilot and your clothes are picked out, you can get up and get dressed and you put your makeup away as you're getting ready. You do your swish and swipe and you walk out of the bathroom with a load of laundry, stick it in the washing machine, bam. Your, your, your morning started off because you didn't have to think. Yeah, you didn't have to think. Let's see, uh, October, our habit of the month is dealing with paper clutter. Once you get that habit established, paper clutter is not going to pile up because you're going to deal with it when it comes in the house every day. When it comes in that mailbox, you're going to deal with it just as fast as it walks in the door. You're going to process it. Is it trash? Most 95% of what comes in our mailbox is trash. Trash. So getting that in the trash receptacle, the recycle receptacle, we call it a burn pile because once a week we will burn any boxes in our fire pit. And Robert loves it. He absolutely loves it. November's habit is menu planning. I know we do menu planning every week on Tuesday. We're planning and then we get to play. But some people have never done it. Do you know how much money menu planning can save you? Yeah, it can save you a lot of money. And right now, we all could use a little extra. But when we plan our menus, plan for leftovers, plan for meals to use with those leftovers, it's amazing how much money you can save. And you have to plan for school lunches, all kinds of things. So there you have it. And our December habit is pam practicing pampering yourself every day, whether it's... Um, I'm getting ready to need a manicure. My fingernails grow like weeds. And this morning, I'm determined to get them all trimmed back, and polished up, ready to go. So 
So that's, that's, that's all our habits. And then we take the habits as we're practicing them and we piggyback them with another habit that we've established. So for instance, with my before bed routine, I've been uh, adding reading Isaiah to my before bed routine, reading Isaiah. Um, this week, I, you know, I've felt the need to do communion with the Lord every night. I don't know why. During Lent, I did 40 days of communion. Uh, I know Derek Prince and his wife did communion every morning. But I'm, I'm just piggybacking on the getting ready. I have a time that I turn my computer off. And then I go into my worship. I listen to um, a pastor that I love to listen to uh, or a meditation on a, a specific thing, a Derek Prince 10-minute thing. I listen, I listen to and I read at the same time that uh, David Sukant or whatever his name is reads the Bible. I'm an auditory learner. If I read the Bible, I have to read it out loud. So I've got my earphones in listening to David read the Bible as I am reading it. And it works for me. It gets in my head. And I'll do a couple of chapters. So folks, I love you all. And I want you to have what I have. The peace that comes from establishing habits, stringing them together into routines and letting those routines become a habit. Your morning, afternoon, and evening routines. Well, let's, let's uh, get, get down to, where's day two? Day two of our baby step book. Now, if you don't have this book, Get it. You can use the, the coupon code on it too. Day two is when you first get up, get dressed to lace up shoes, fix your hair and your face. And then there's uh, the importance of getting dressed to lace up shoes. It's so you're ready for your day. I've watched my husband do this for over 25 years. We'll soon be married 26 years. And he gets in the shower. I can time it to a second, pretty much. Because we don't run water when anybody else is in the shower. He he get, he get burned. But there's some great testimonials. And then when my lace-up shoes are on my feet, I feel empowered. Shoes tell your head it's time to do something. So don't get stuck. Yesterday's was all about shining your sink. And this book is dedicated. This, let me show you here. This book is dedicated to all the perfectionists who can't seem to get started. Jump in and please don't get stuck waiting for all the answers. Peace is just a series of baby steps. And then um, I wanted the acknowledgement there, this book, as well as our website, emails, and social media presence would not be possible without everyone who helps me to support all of you. We are a team. A team wrote this book. I learned to delegate. <laughs> and I handed off days to different people. I had my days that I did. Everybody had days, and we compiled this. It's a beautiful book. So don't get hung up on just being, not being able to see the top of the staircase. Behind my head, there's a little plaque that I have that I got um, a long time ago, and 
It's a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And it says, you don't have, I'm paraphrasing, you don't have to see the top of the staircase to take the first step. Take the first step, y'all. I'm begging you. I want you to find your purpose, your calling in life. And as long as your house is pulling you away from that, the enemy is trying to, to steal your life, to destroy your home, to destroy your children. But if you have a place, a sanctuary for your family to be, for your heart to be calm, your life is going to change. And that, that devil can't come after you. That chaos that you've been living in. Are you living in chaos? Can't have anyone over syndrome? Well, I want to eliminate that. And we, we are chaos destroyers. The, the demon cannot destroy your home when you're on top of it, when you're doing your habits and you're stringing them into routines and turning those routines into habits to keep your, that's a foundation for not only your life, your children's lives, their children's lives. We're into four generations now that are doing fly, fly baby stuff. Four. I know it doesn't seem possible, but it is. We got grandmothers and mothers and granddaughters and little babies. Four generations. What's your excuse? You waiting for somebody to tell you what to do? Well, I'm here to tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you what to do. But sometimes we got to let our habits tell us what to do. We got to get on autopilot. Autopilot's a beautiful thing, an absolutely beautiful thing. I love you all. I think I'm going to replay this many times. I'm going to hold off on reading uh, I, reading um, Proverbs, not Proverbs, we're, we're reading Psalms. I'm going to hold off on reading Psalms. You know, it's the weekend. Get Do a, a, a two-minute weekly home blessing to get your home ready for the weekend so you can make some memories with your family. We have a basic weekly plan that all works together with this. Monday, we bless our homes. Tuesday, we plan and play. Wednesday's always anti-procrastination day. Thursday, run a few errands so you don't have to do them on Saturday. Friday is clean out your car and your purse. And Saturday is family fun day. Make some memories. Don't let your procrastination steal memories from your family. Don't, let, don't do that. Playing catch up on the weekend, it's time to stop that nonsense. Your routines will help you do that. You got me? Do you hear me? Listen up. And Sunday is spend the day renewing your spirit with the Lord. Taking some time to rest and meditate on the word. Stay in your Bibles. But you know, worshiping the Lord is not just a one-day thing. Do it every day, every single day. Well, I'm off of here, y'all. I love you very much. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, please be with all my fly babies all over the world. Keep them safe. Help them to kick that chaos out of their home in the name of Jesus. To jump in. And establish habits, stringing them into routines. Thank you, Lord, for the epiphany you gave me on that New, Year, that New Year's Day so many years ago of 1999, New Year's Day. Thank you for giving me peace. And thank you for helping me to find my purpose on this earth. And I'm ready to do whatever you need me to do. And my fly babies will be ready too. We are your army for the Lord. We are in the Lord's army 
I love it. I love it, Lord. Thank you so much. We're ready. We're willing. We're able because our home is in order. To God be the glory. We praise you, Lord, with everything that is in us. Be with us. Keep us safe. Protect our babies. Protect our families. And help us to be ready to share the good news of Jesus with people who are searching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Woo. I love you all. Don't ever forget it. Don't ever forget it. You are why I was put here on this earth. To help another platoon of the army to go out for the Lord. I never knew I had a, a, a mission to my life. Now I know God revealed it. And he will reveal it to you too. Because we've all been given a purpose. I love you all. I will see you later. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. The good Lord just said I need to read the Psalms. <laughs> okay. The, uh, Psalm 144. Rescue me. There's only one strong, safe, and secure place for me. It's it's in God alone. It's in God alone who gives me strength for the battle. <laughs> That's why God told me to read it. Oh. Also, the fact that we've been doing it every day for a couple of years. Um, he's my shelter of love and my fortress of faith who wraps himself around me as a secure shield. I hide myself in this one who subdues enemies before me. Lord, what is it about us that you would even notice us? Why do you even bother with us? For man is nothing but a faint whisper, a mere breath. We spend our days like nothing more than a passing shadow. Step down from heaven, Lord, and come down and make the mountains melt at your touch. Lose your fiery lightning, loose your fiery lightning flashes and scatter your enemies. Throw them with your terrifying, overthrow them with your terrifying judgments. Reach down from your heaven and rescue me from the hell and deliver me from those dark powers. They speak nothing but lies. Their words are pure deceit. Nothing they say can ever be trusted. My God, I will sing you like a brand new song. The harp inside of my heart will make music to you. I will sing to you and I will sing to you the one who gives victory to kings. The one who rescues David, your loving servant, from a fatal sword. Deliver me and save me from those dark powers who speak nothing but lies. Their words are pure deceit and you can't trust anything they say. Deliver us when our home, then our homes will be happy. Our sons will grow up strong and sturdy men. Our daughters with graceful beauty, royally fashioned as for a palace. Our barns will be filled to the brim, overflowing with the fruits of our harvest. Our fields will be full of sheep and cattle, too many to count, and our livestock will not miscarry their young. Our enemies will not invade our land, and they'll be there and there will be no breach in our walls. What bliss we experience when these blessings fall. The people who love and serve God will be happy indeed. Well, that pretty much says what, why we do routines <laughs> and habits. 
It's to, it's, it's to get closer to God. Okay, y'all. Be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by not beating yourself up. You know, on that New Year's Day, I made the resolution to get organized, but the other one was to be kind to me. Be kind to me. Be good to yourself. Be kind to yourself. And when you're kind to yourself, you're not cursing yourself. We say some of the ugliest things you've ever heard about us to us. So let go of those ugly words. Quit saying them. And let the joy that is in your heart overflow and show the world the sweetness that comes from the Lord above. I love you all. I'll catch you later.